Welcome to Morningstar. My name is Christopher Johnson, and today I'm joined by Rahil Altaf, Fund Manager at Artemis Investment Management. Rahil, thank you so much for being here with me. Good to be here, PG. So, my first question to you is, in comparison to the MSCI Emerging Markets Index, you are overweight Brazil. Why are you so bullish on the Latin American country? Um, well, there's, some, there's certainly some interesting trends developing in Brazil. Brazil's you know, an agriculture and commodity powerhouse in the world, and it supplies food products, you know, things like soya beans, coffee, sugar, to lots of countries around the world. And what we've seen in the last few years is rising inflation has led to increasing sort of prices, and demand has been pretty firm. So Brazil as an economy is benefiting um, from exporting these goods all around the world. Now, as inflation's gone up, the government, uh, um, so, sorry, they, they've raised interest rates quite aggressively to protect against those inflationary pressures. And as inflation started to come down, we're starting to see those interest rates coming down. So I think that's quite supportive to growth in the economy. And then for shareholders, we see very attractive dividend yields, depressed valuations that suggest it's a great entry point. And you've got these longer term growth drivers that are likely to be quite positive for, 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 for shareholders. You mentioned um, agriculture and um, global food demand, in particular from China, is driving um, agriculture in, in Brazil. And it now accounts for about 25 percent of um, Brazil's GDP. But with agribusiness booming, it doesn't seem to feature much in your fund. But why is that if it's so important? I think if you look at direct sort of agriculture producers, we don't have any in the fund. But what we do have in the fund are companies that really benefit from that surging demand. Um, and, you know, the discipline that we follow is ultimately about trying to identify fundamental trends in companies. So where are you seeing growth coming through? And where is that good news not reflected in the share price today? So is there an opportunity, you know, uh, for an investor, you know, to, to participate in the, in the shares performing well? And we think um, the opportunities are in financials, are in other commodity plays like energy, for instance, and some of the metal producers, um, and, and also within the insurance sector. So our capital is allocated towards those areas. But some of those companies really do benefit from that rosy picture that's developing in, um, in the economic uh, side of things. So, Petróleo Brasileiro or Petrobus is a top holding of yours at 3.4%. So, why are you bullish on this stock and how is this energy company benefiting from, you know, the increase in agriculture in Brazil? Well, you know, Petrobras is one of the, the, the biggest energy producers uh, in the world and, and, and clearly energy stocks have had, you know, challenges in the last decade and that's led to a lot of underinvestment, if you like. Um, what we've seen, you know, happening over the last few years or the last decade is that, you know, the, the, the company has, has cleaned up its balance sheet. Now, as oil prices have been going up because of pretty robust and firm demand from around the world, the company is benefiting from that demand and that's leading to sort of cash flows that are going up. The company's shares are trading on quite a depressed valuation, but I think more importantly, they've been paying out this cash that's been generated to shareholders. Um, and so the dividend story in Petrobras has been an exceptional one over the last few years. And if we look at the total return um, that, you know, that, that investors have got, that, that has you know, outpaced the market quite substantially. On um, dividends, I mean, there was a story coming out about Petrobras that they withheld their dividends from shareholders recently. Um, so does this lead you to have any governance concerns at all or is this just an aberration? I think it's, it's important to consider the governance for companies, particularly in emerging markets, and that has been a, a, you know, a, a problem in the past, and certainly Petrobras has its own checkered history. Uh, when I look at the company, what we're seeing is, is governance is, is certainly improving. Um, in the last three years alone, the company has paid out about $75 billion in dividends. Now, the company's market cap today is, is, is around $100 billion. So it's paid out almost all of its market cap in the last few years. And it's forecast to do you know, pretty well on that side of things going forward. So the story you know, that, that's come out more recently is really about the extra, extraordinary div dividends, what's happening to surplus cash that's being generated. 
And there's some concerns amongst investors that that's not going to be delivered to shareholders. Um, but, but you know, even when you adjust for that, the yield that shareholders are getting is very attractive. I wanted just to circle back to agriculture. So the reason why I'm interested in this topic is because I was reading about the fact that, um, of course, agribusinesses are growing, but there are also concerns about how climate change could impact, you know, the yields of um, crops and so forth, of sugar or soybeans. Is that something you're taking into consideration um, as obviously we're going to be feeling more of the effects of climate change and maybe the possible ramifications that we'll have on this, you know, burgeoning sector in Brazil? I think that's, you know, that's certainly been a concern in, in, you know, in the last few years. And it's something that, you know, we're very aware of. What we're looking for in businesses is, is firstly evidence that there are sustainable efforts underway when it comes to the practices that they have, you know, whether it's, you know, food production, whether it's, you know, energy production or whether it's, um, you know, manufacturing of goods. There are some businesses that have understood these longer term sort of risks, you know, around the climate and the effect that that's going to have on the world. And they are starting to evolve and change their practices for the better. We think those are likely to be winning businesses over time. And you can find some of those in Brazil as well. Um, but clearly, the other side of things is that demand for these things is not going to go away. So we've got to focus on, you know, identifying the companies that have good practices, but also, you know, find the winning businesses that are going to benefit from those longer term growth drivers. And Banco do Brasil is another top holding of the fund. Um, its share price has seen a consistent uptick over the last five years. So what do you think is driving these businesses and positive momentum? Well, quite simply, you know, financials tend to benefit when interest rates go up, their net, you know, their net income margins go up and, and their profitability improves. And, and interest rates in Brazil are north of 10%. Inflation is much lower. So, you know, the funding yield um, that, that, that Banco de Brazil is enjoying is, is, is a very favorable one. The bank is connected to the agriculture sector, and it's been growing its loan book, particularly on the rural side uh, of things, and that's been you know, a strong growth driver. Now, alongside that, you've got you know, a very positive dividend story. The dividend yield in Banco de Brazil is around 10%. Um, so the shares have performed well because the bank is profitable. It trades on a very cheap valuation compared to its peers, and it continues to grow quite rapidly. And I wanted to speak to you about India, which also features within the fund. Um, it is underweight in comparison to the um, MSCI Emerging Market Index. Um, why is this? Does this have anything to do with the fact that equity valuations in India are extremely high? I think that's, that's certainly some of the reason. I mean, you know, if we take uh, a valuation metric like the Shiller PE, where, for instance, you're looking at uh, the last 10 years earnings and you're comparing that to the share price today, then India's the most richly valued equity market in the world. It's more expensive than the US. Um, and, and that's surprising given, yes, there has been very attractive growth in the economy and in a number of companies, but share prices have clearly overshot the fundamental story. So I think you know some investors are really buying into this persisting for a long period of time. And our view is that one should be cautious as valuations become quite excessive. And so we think there are some parts of the Indian equity market that are very overvalued. And we're nervous about what that means for future returns. So which parts of the um, kind of um, equity space within India are you avoiding because of um, high valuations? I think there's, there's certainly some consumer segments of the market where the growth rates in these businesses have not really changed. They're seen as quite defensive businesses, so consumer staples, for instance. Um, and 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 but, but there's no shortage of businesses, you know, where the company share prices are trading on 50 or 60 times earnings. So those are the sorts of companies where we think you're not really getting the reward for improving growth prospects, and that you know that valuation is is really quite restrictive. India is going through a general election; it's imminent. And Narendra Modi is expected to win a, another term. Um, how do you think a possible Modi win will impact India's economy going forwards? Yeah, it's 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 quite unprecedented. You know, it 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 looks like Modi is likely to win, you know, his his third term. And um, if we look at the history of India, um, you haven't had a majority government 
you know, in the past. And so it is interesting that, that we're moving towards this direction. I think if we look at what has happened in Indi India, there's been a lot of infrastructure spending. There's been a you know increase in manufacturing, and um, and and there's a confidence that's come back into the economy. So I'd expect this to sort of continue in the years ahead. Uh, but there are some challenges that you know mean that reforms you know need to continue. The poverty level is still at you know um, slightly concerning levels in in many parts of of the economy, and there's a lot more work that needs to be done there. Um, to, to sort of improve and increase the levels of urbanization that, that we've seen, you know, over the last decade or more. And onto the fund, according to Morningstar data, over one year, the fund has experienced an inflow of over £239 million. So what do you put this down to? Well, I think, you know, the, the positive flows that we've, um, that we've seen in the fund are, are firstly down to the fact that performance has been, you know, good in uh, within the fund, and we've outperformed the market fairly consistently since we launched the strategy. But I think also looking back, you know, investors had investors had become quite crowded towards some high growth and some of the, you know, more quality parts of the market. And you know, the fund that we run yeah, uh, is is biased towards companies that trade on more depressed valuations. So it's very complementary to some of those, you know, popular funds, and it's um, it's acting as a good diversifier within that portfolio mix. Thank you so much for being here with me. Thank you. This is Christopher Johnson for Morningstar UK.